In this video, we will add the other side of fascia board onto the house. And since this is an older house, you could be dealing with something that might not look like this. And of course, this would be a house that would have had fascia board. It just wouldn't have had an overhang. And I'd also like to point out that your rafters might not be exactly spaced the same. And that'll also include your ceiling joists. For example, they might be about 16 inches on center. They might be about 24 inches on center. Just don't expect all of them to be the same because they didn't have to deal with plywood spacing at eight foot on center because they were usually working with one by six sheathing. And I don't think they were worried about lumber prices like we had today, where you, on the other hand, might need to be a little more concerned about expensive lumber prices. So the main concept of this video will be to extend the overhang by attaching another rafter or overhang board to the existing roof rafters. And you can see here where we added one to this side and one to the other side. And we attach them with 16 D nails. And in our first example, we are going to use a two by four and the nailing spacing is usually going to be 16 inches on center staggered. So that would be 16 inches on center over here. And then you're gonna kind of go over eight inches in the center and then space them 16 inches on center again. That seems to be a popular nailing pattern for stuff like this. So again, a two by four extender board here, or even something larger, maybe something the same size as your existing roof rafters. However, I will not be able to provide you with the lumber sizes that you need because you could be dealing with snow loads, heavy roofing materials, and long overhangs that might require larger lumber. Now, another thing I want to point out, and this is your typical cantilever framing formula, and that will be the fact that the length of the overhang usually requires twice the distance to provide you with the correct support. For example, if we come out two feet, then we need to go back four feet for a total length of a six foot long board. If I go out 16 inches, then I need to come back 32 inches for a total length of a board that will be four feet. Now this is a standard method use. However, you might need to go back farther also. Again, this video is not meant to provide you with all of the structural engineering information you need to do something like this. And since our roof rafters are two by six, we are going to use two by six and that will require a C cut in our extender boards. Let's go ahead and take a look at the seat cut and this will vary from project to project. And another thing that is going to be important on your project, especially if you're going to be laying out the roof rafters to work with your plywood or if you need an exact 16 inch on center or 24 inch on center spacing is that you should lay out everything first to see exactly where these boards are going to end up. And here's a good example of it. If we start with this board on this side of the roof rafter, then we're going to hit the ceiling joist here. And if your extender boards do end up sitting on top of a roof rafter or a ceiling joist, then simply move them over and accept the fact that you're not going to be able to lay everything out perfectly. So with that said, let's go ahead and see if I can not provide you with a few more methods you might be able to use if you need to locate the extender boards in an area that won't be directly connected to a roof rafter. And in our first example, we will be using a filler board, something that will be the width of a ceiling joist in case you had a situation like this. And that would simply be a piece of wood that would make up for the space or the thickness of the ceiling joist and provide you with another method that you can use. So again, a filler board here that would be the width or something that you could use to create the same width. For example, if this is two inches, you could always use a two by four and maybe a three eighths or a half inch piece of plywood to create something that would be two inches wide. And again, I'm providing you with these examples something that you can think about which one you're going to use and at the same time you can see here where this isn't going to be as beneficial as if we put it on the other side and another thing you could do would be to use some type of a block at the top 
and forget about the filler piece. Again, another idea or method you can use here, toenail the rafter into the framing plates and then in-nail the rafter into the ceiling joist. And if you can, then put a toenail in from the other side, but you can see here where we cannot do that. And if it's a two by six, you can use three 16D nails to nail into the block and then into our extender rafter or extender board. And this method right here might work better for you if you have 24 inch on center rafters and you're going to space the extender boards 16 inches on center. And of course, this method here will allow you to locate the rafter anywhere in between these other roof rafters if you need to, to make the layout work. And of course, here's an example of how we can toenail the other side of the roof rafter if we have the room to do it when it is not up against another ceiling joist or rafter. And hopefully this makes sense here. And of course, the top will be nailed the same as we did before. And if you're dealing with two by four here, you might only need two 16D nails. And you might even be able to come up with your own methods for attaching the extender boards to the rafters or, or for locating them somewhere else with the blocks. And another thing you could do would be to use one of your extender boards and cut the existing roof rafter so that you can have it finish off nice at the corner here. Again, this will be something you need to think about on whether or not it will work for your project. But you can see here where the extender board will be notched around our lookouts, our two by four extenders here that will be supporting the barge rafter or the gable end fascia board. And you can see here where the gable studs will be providing structural support for our new extender board and for our existing gable roof rafter. And you can always use the previous example where we just simply added this rafter to the inside of the existing roof rafter. Now let's go ahead and pan out and take a look at the roof overhang rafters along with how they will have worked out by nailing them to our existing rafters. So you can see here where we had to remove this block, but we didn't have to remove this one or this one. And that's going to change a little bit further down when we pass this section here, because I believe I went ahead and moved some of the rafters over so that the ceiling joist would work for one of the walls as ceiling backing boards that will be used to support the drywall or interior lath and plaster. And next up, let's take a look at another method that might work for you. And that would be to nail an extender board to the outside of the roof rafter instead of on the other side of the roof rafter. And again, this would depend upon how you're finishing the exterior of the house, the exterior walls with siding or stucco. Because if you don't like this idea here and this isn't going to work for you, then you might consider using a full length board, something that you might be able to add some trim to or finish somehow. And keep in mind that we have two by six fascia board here and two by six roof rafters. And if you don't like the way it finishes at the bottom, I would suggest using a two by eight. And I will be providing you with an example of that at the end of the video. Next up, let's go ahead and mark each end of the extender boards to create the desired length of our overhang. In our example, we're going to have a two foot overhang. And yours, of course, can be different and can be adjusted accordingly. But the one thing we want to do for sure is make sure that this measurement right here is located the same distance from either this point here or from the face of our wall framing so that the fascia board is going to be parallel with the wall framing or the outside wall. After that, we will need to create a straight line. And to do that, we can simply drive a nail into the center of the line in the roof rafter so that we can attach one end of the string to it. And you can use either a nylon string or your chalk line string and simply tie the end of the string or use the hook on your chalk line and then do the same on the other end. And I do have another video on how you can use a string, how you can pull the string tight and then tie it off at this end to create a nice straight line, something that you can use 
along with a square, framing square, speed square, that you can butt right up against the line. See here that we have this edge of the framing square right up against the string here, and we're not going to want to push the string. You do not want to move the string. So make sure that you don't take the framing square and push the string out a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. And you're not going to cut the extender boards yet. You're going to mark them and then double check those marks along with your tight string to make sure that they are not off a little bit. So double check all of these lines before you remove the string. And then after you remove the string, you can grab a straight edge because we haven't marked the fascia board yet. And then line one edge of the straight edge up with these marks. And then once you have that in place, you can go ahead and mark the fascia board. And then after it has been marked, you can draw your square line. Now keep in mind that this is going to need to be cut at a 45 degree angle and is going to be the inside of the fascia board. Fascia board is going to nail over the rafter and you are not going to cut this off square. You'll cut it at a 45 degree angle. And after you've marked this, you can go ahead and mark the other end. And then the next step would be to cut the angle on the fascia board along with all of the extender boards. And again, that angle should be a 45 degree angle unless you're doing something tricky with the fascia board. And of course, you can see here where we have a nice straight line on the top and on the bottom. And if you've double checked all your measurements, you won't need to double check everything again. Go ahead and grab the fascia board and put it on. And that would look something like this. And if you can, install all of the brakes something like this to where you'll be able to nail each one of the fascia board brakes into a roof rafter. It'll be difficult to nail this stuff together if it's located somewhere out here in between the extenders. And of course, the 2x6 fascia board can nail with either 2 or 3 some type of galvanized zinc or stainless steel non-corrosive nail since it's going to be located on the exterior of the building. And of course, this is what I was talking about with the 2x6 extenders and the 2x6 fascia board. And if for whatever reason the fascia board is a little smaller than the extender boards, and I've seen this happen before. I've seen five and a half inch wide rafters and five and a quarter inch fascia board. So make sure that you double check the measurements for both the fascia board and the lumber you're going to be using for your extender boards. Otherwise, simply buy larger lumber for the fascia board. Two by eight fascia board works good with two by six extenders or two by six rafter tails. And if I was going to use 2x4 extenders or 2x4 rafter tails, then I can go ahead and use the 2x6 for the roof fascia board. Now, you can install your blocks before or after the fascia board. However, most engineers are going to want to see them. They're going to want to see the rafters blocked. They're going to want to see blocks in between the ceiling joist and the rafters. However, the engineer might require perimeter nailing, which might require a different type of blocking. And these blocks can be at the same angle as the fascia board, which would be square or a 90 degree angle from the top. And if you need more information about the blocking, feel free to let me know in the comment area along with anything else. I'm going to go ahead and try and make another video on the roof sheathing to complete this part of our old home remodeling section. And again, a missing block here. You will need to block this. And I say that, but I'm not about to suggest your house is going to fall down if you don't, but it's obviously going to be better if you do. So with that said, feel free to leave any questions you have or comments in the comment area. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button to let us know that you enjoyed the video or at the very least learned something from it.